the gods vanished and left our world in chaos, creating, altering, destroying. The anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. Couple times and it's still cool every time I see it. So I know all of you, like me, have had tons of questions about Anthem since last year because we're all Bioware fans. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the rest of the show and we're going to take a deep dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring out some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rootsart. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out today. Just yeah, got a little game to show, right? Yep. Lots it's going to be very exciting. So, Casey, we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So, now we know that you all started, or Casey, you started your career at BioWare mm -hmm. way back in the day, but you yep. took a couple years off. But before you came back, you actually worked on Anthem before you left. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making. Games for Bioware fans, you know, we have the best fans. Uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it. And, you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio. And that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about, you know, what is the evolution of a Bioware game? And we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character. But we also wanted to do something that was, you know, more of a dynamic and living world, a game that would change every time you came back and played it. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with story sort of bolted on this side, but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Now you can build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the core of the game. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world, the world is really dangerous, and you're focused on your mission. And this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting about this, it's unique for, uh, for Anthem, is that this is a living, shared world. So whether there's weather, or uh, it's nighttime, 
What we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at, a, at a moment is seeing the same thing. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. But then when I finish my mission, I come back to a base like Fort Tarsus. And this is a single player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards, I talk to some characters, I experience the choices of my action. And this is where your story really lives and breathes. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so that we can add story for years to come. So one of the first things that we hear when, um, from our community is they want to continue to play in our worlds when they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age. Players want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment with a character that you've grown to love, or uh, an event in the world that uh, deepens the lore, or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So Kathleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, from a writing perspective, since you are the lead writer, can you speak to what it's like to create a new world like Anthem from the beginning? Well, what's really exciting for us, um, and not just the writers, but all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind their massive tools, and those tools are in constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic monsters. It's a dangerous environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, to be safe in. Now, something I think a lot of players out there maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the process of creating a game like from scratch? Yeah, it's something we've done a few times at BioWare. Um, you know, and really the hardest part is getting started, just kind of getting off the blank page. Uh, so what we try to do is we think about the new experiences that we're trying to unlock for players. So like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? So that's where we start. And then once we think about those things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games, is that you actually get to build a whole fictional universe that's meant to bring out a certain experience. And then once we do that, then we kind of we still need to build all the rest of the stuff, and what unlocks us creatively is to think about like principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our new world. And then from there, we can actually go and build out every last detail. Yeah, and one of the uh, unique challenges for Anthem is that it's a world, an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, weather, the uh, storms, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, it's a really great concept to write for because what it means is it gives us the opportunity to drop into the world, almost in real time, a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. And that could be anything from gameplay to lore. I mean, the, all of the moving parts in the dynamic world sound really cool the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy beasts. So you are a freelancer, uniquely skilled to pilot these, exo, ja, these Javelin exo suits. And uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, have uh, they've discovered a way, they think, to weaponize the anthem of creation. And so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now, I've heard you call this power armor a couple different things. Is it a, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the, what's the canon term here? We call them javelins, and there are four. And uh, they each have uh, unique abilities. There's the ranger, 
And then there's the Colossus, the Interceptor, and finally, the Storm. Yeah, so uh, each Javelin gives you a different way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is, like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, a pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood, based on the mission you want to engage with, or the, or the Javelins that your friends are using. Um, so really what this allows us to do is we've built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world. Uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. The Ranger is a more generalized suit, uh, able to, uh, to do a lot of different things, uh, use, really designed for up close and personal combat, one-on-one uh, -on -one for the most part. The Colossus is heavier, more specialized, but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. I, I'm just going to say the storm looks like it's going to be my favorite. I'm sure you guys out there are picking your faves right now, too. Um, so the javelins look awesome, but we're going to take a couple questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. And the first one is going to be from at It's Sweet Nicole, who asks, as a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Yeah, so we really want pe players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their, their uh, javelin plays, through gear and uh, weapons, but also being able to personalize the way that it looks, uh, both through paint jobs as well as changing the actual uh, geometry of the suit itself. We want teams to be able to do this as well. Mm. And because you're going to be using a javelin for a long period of time, we really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up, because actually, uh, Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. Monetization, how, when, loot box, cosmetics? Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always gonna know what you're gonna buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So no loot boxes, no ability to pay for power. Yay. So that means no ability to spend money on gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. But even more important than that, we wanna make sure that Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm gonna be honest. All right, Casey, we talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem's gonna work? Yeah, it, it really is about you know, the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. So um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. So you know, I think here we're going to see the, the Colossus you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay, if we can have a look at that. So heavy artillery, being really strong you know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the Ranger shooting down from above. And then they're using com you know, combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around, you're swimming and flying as well. So it's interesting because at the Slate Tones wants to know, how will you balance multiplayer with single player storytelling? So Anthem's really built around trying to combine the, uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that, uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just experience the story, we're, you're going to be able to do that. Now, going out into an open world like this uh, by yourself is going to be a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Okay, that's good to know. If you want to roll solo, you can, but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your seats. How about we show a little gameplay? Yeah? You guys want that? All right, so um, Kathleen, I think you're going to set this up for us? I will. So, um, the, you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villainy. The Scars have put together an acid-based super weapon, so you've got to take them out. So, you start in the Strider, which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. You have a conversation with your crew, Halleck, Faye, and Owen, and you'll hear Owen, he's going to talk us through the mission as we, as we experience it here. Um, and yeah, then you just get into your javelin suit and you head out with your friends. All right, well, thank you so much, Mark, Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me about Anthem today. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. Freelancer, time to get to work. Faye said these bastards made some kind of acid. They're using it as a weapon. So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. Right. Checking out the scar camp some more. Look at all the weapons! Oh, and the, and the turrets! Better move quickly. There's a shaker relic. Wait, something's odd. Get a closer look, would you? you? See those radiant pieces of energy? They're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Loads of scars nearby. Be careful. Turn them to the relic. You've got to silence it fast. It's got silent. Disaster averted. Do you think we get a bonus for... Wait, something's happening. What the hell was that? I think... That was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it, and we should find the source. Yep, and that was, uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I'm sure the question on everyone's minds, when do we get to play? So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019 on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. 
So mark your calendars, everybody. Fire off your tweets. Thank you so much again to Casey and the entire BioWare team. I know you guys have that awesome theater outside, so I will see you guys there. All right. Give it up there. for Casey Hudson, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at their studios back home around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, some of what you saw today